Hello folks, welcome to another Dark Table Landscapes video. Uh, in this one we're looking at something slightly different from our usual uh, kind of mountain landscape-y kind of shots. We're going for a miniature landscape, uh, in this case taken from the, the wild badlands of my front lawn. Uh, a little mushroom macro for a change. Uh, this was taken with just a set of extension tubes. I don't do a, a huge amount of macro photography, so uh, I just have some decent auto-focusing extension tubes. And then in terms of lighting, this was a very bright flashlight with uh, some kitchen foil above the mushroom. And I just bounced the light down onto it for some kind of relatively diffused light. Uh, so my goal for this is to kind of make it a bit more magical, a bit more um, dreamy, if you like. We'll blur this background some more with some negative clarity. We'll focus our attention on the mushroom. We we'll use some masking to uh, make sure that the mushroom gets the attention it needs maybe do some colour grading to just kind of push that magical feeling a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what we can do with this uh, slightly different one. So let's get going on that one. So the first thing I will do is just do some basic correction. So we'll do lens correction. We'll do uh, chromatic aberration. The extension tubes I use don't have any glass in them. So generally they, they're pretty good in terms of image quality. Uh, they just limit the uh, infinity focus distance. You can't focus at infinity anymore. Uh, but they don't have any real negative effect on image quality. But I'll just kind of do these odd things here. We'll do denoising. This was at uh, what 500 ISO, so a little bit noisy. And let's just do demosaic because I'm on a Fuji. I'm just going to change this to three pass for a slightly better result. Okay, that's all good. Now I think I will crop uh, mushrooms slightly too central for my liking. Um, it's very hard to, this mushroom is about maybe a centimetre across, half an inch or so across the, the widest part. So you can see how small it is. I had my tripod with the, the uh, stem upside down, so the camera was upside down, having to squeeze my finger between the, the ground and the uh, camera to get the shutter button pressed. It was a bit awkward to compose, as macro often is. So I'm just going to crop to fix that and uh, just make things a little bit tighter in terms of composition. We pull that up there. There we go. Yeah, that's more like it. And now we can start with adjusting things properly. So let's look at exposure. It's maybe a bit bright. Uh, so I'll probably just drop that right down. It's more like it. I'd like this kind of this background to almost be black, almost very dark, really. So the mushroom stands out. So that's fine exposure wise. Let's have a look at sigmoid. We need more contrast. It's probably about right. And let's have a look at color calibration for the white balance. That's very blue. Let's just see what it, our shot in camera comes out as. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably probably better. I think yeah, that's fine. Now let's hit good old color balance RGB. And we'll do a little bit of contrast adjustment. Uh, let's maybe just drop the vibrance a touch. And then we'll do our usual perceptual saturation grading in ever increasing or decreasing amounts. Whoops. Now let's drop the shadows. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Boost the mids. And we may be getting slightly bright in the highlights. So maybe just drop, drop them a touch. Some nice stripes on the, on the mushroom here, on the cap of it. So we'll try and maintain that. And now this grass is looking very green. Uh, so let's do a little bit of color grading as well. So I'll do some kind of coarse color grading, if you like, with the four ways tab. Uh, we'll go for, let's go for cliched, but an old faithful teal and orange. So we'll go for the shadows being a little bit more teal. And we'll go for power, which is the midtones being more orange. There we go. Okay, so some further color grading, I think. So we'll go for RGB primaries. Uh, let's bring up our red hue. It'll be one, one and a half, two. And our red purity, we can probably increase a little bit. The greens are what I'm mainly interested in. So what, what I may in fact do is just limit this to the background rather than the mushroom itself. We'll see how it goes. Uh, drop our green purity down so it's not quite as green. And then we'll drop our blue slightly. Yeah, I think 
I'll go downwards. It's kind of color grading is mainly just an exercise in experimenting and see what you like. So let's see how that's varied things. So yeah, it's kind of um, desaturated our greens and shifted them towards blue, which contrasts nicely with the orange. But I don't like the fact that it's affecting the mushrooms well. The mushrooms are nice, strong orange as it is. So let's use a parametric mask to fix this. Uh, so I'll click the parametric mask button down here. And if we take a look at our image, the main differentiating factor between the mushroom and the background is the colour. The, the mushroom is orange very clearly and the background is green very clearly. So we'll use the uh, HZ uh, channel, if you like, the mask, which is basically the colour. Uh, so I'll click HZ down here and I'll click the little plus eyedropper, which will let me select a range of colours that we can adjust. So. Let's uh, zoom back out and then we'll drag an area. And if we turn on our mask preview, we'll see that that's now selected at least some of the greens, but we're obviously catching some orange as well. So let's just select a slightly narrower range. Maybe drag this up here a little bit. That's it. Make sure we're getting the background, but our mushroom is relatively untouched. So we just need to feather this now to soften the transition off. Blur it a little bit as well. And then when we turn our mask off, see that our mushroom is now its original orange. The background is kind of a bit bluer and uh, less saturated. So it's pretty good. Happy with that. Okay, so let's add a little bit more of a kind of a dreamy feel. We'll go for contrast equalizer. Pop that on. Roll our mouse wheel down to make the wheel nice and big. And then we'll just drop that for kind of a negative clarity effect. Let's go for something like that. Now I'd like to avoid doing that for the mushroom. I just want the background to be like that again. So if I click the raster mask button here, this will allow us to use pre mask that we've already used. So essentially uh, the one that we just used for RGB primaries. There we go. Uh, we can apply that straight away without having to kind of go through the whole rigmarole of selecting the hue again. Uh, so if I turn the mask preview on, you'll see the mask is exactly the same. And now our uh, kind of hazy dreamy effect is just applied to the background. So that's pretty good. That's fine. And then we'll duplicate this. And this time we'll, uh, we'll use the same raster mask. So RGB primaries again, but we'll click this reverse polarity button here. And now we've inverted that mask. So now we're just selecting the mushroom and a few of these other bits that so out of focus, they won't really matter. So that's fine. So now our mushroom is selected. We can instead do some positive clarity. So we'll roll this mouse wheel down and then we'll drag it up a little bit just to accentuate the details on the mushroom itself. There we go. Uh, so let's call this uh, clarity. Control click to rename and I'll call this one BG Haze. And duplicate one more time. And we'll use the same mask again, again inverted. So just selecting the mushroom and then we'll just drag up this end and this end for a little bit of texture enhancement. Okay, so we'll do texture as well. We'll turn off all three. So our first one is building in some, some dreamy haze to the background. The second one is clarifying our mushroom. And the last one is just adding a little bit of texture to the mushroom as well. Okay, uh, let's add a good old fashioned vignette. Those of you who've seen my videos before know I like using a vignette. So we'll, we'll duplicate our exposure and we'll use a drawn mask this time and an oval. And we basically want to focus on the mushroom. So we'll pop that on there, maybe roll that transition a little bit in with shift and roll the mouse wheel. At the moment that's selecting the mushroom itself or that, that oval, we'll invert it with the polarity button. We'll uh, then reduce our exposure. So that's our vignette kicking in. Give it a bit more feather for a softer, smoother transition. Increase that a little bit. There we go, just focusing attention again on the mushroom and making the background kind of less prominent, which is really the point of any vignette. 
In fact, I think what I would like to do is, is darken this background more. Um, I think maybe this is the foil uh, that I was using as a kind of a, a reflector. Uh, dip down into the back of the shot and it's kind of looking kind of weirdly blue. I'd like to almost make that more black, darken it down so there's more separation between the background and the mushroom itself. Uh, so there's a few ways we could do this, but I think probably what we'll do is uh, another example, another, sorry, instance of the exposure module. And let's go with a drawn and parametric mask. So we're combining the two kinds of mask. And we'll start with a simple gradient from top to bottom. And let me just turn on the mask preview. So now we're kind of selecting everything from the top down. Uh, let's just roll that in with the shift just to give it a bit more compression. So shift and roll the mouse wheel while hovering that central spot. Uh, and that will pull the, the gradient in a little bit. So we'll lift it up about here I think so that's we've defined our, our area first with the drawn mask and now if we uh, turn the preview off we can see this is kind of vaguely kind of blue gray so again I think a hue uh, an 8z channel will be the way to go to kind of narrow this down further we don't want to darken the mushroom kind of unnaturally so let's grab our uh, plus eyedropper again so a little eyedropper with a plus there and we're going to click Let's go here, we're going to put into mask preview mode again so we can see what we're selecting. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see if we can kind of capture a bit more. Ideally, we don't want to select this bit of the mushroom here. We want to keep that unselected. That's pretty good. Let's feather it so that we've got a nice even transition. So now you can really see we're just selecting this background. We're excluding the mushroom. There's a couple of points here that won't quite be captured. We could maybe catch them with a bit of blur. Maybe a slight bit of mask contrast just for a kind of a tighter mask. Let's see how that goes. We can always come back and adjust. So let's turn our preview off and now we'll see the effect itself. So let's just drop our exposure just a touch. We want to maintain that little bit of texture from the kind of the out of focus grass that's still there. If I drop it way too much, it will almost look kind of, well, it looks unnatural. That doesn't, you can tell it's been done. But if we just pull it back a little bit, just so it's darker at the top than it is at the bottom. I think that is pretty good. So let's look at the whole effect before and after. It's just added a bit more separation between the mushroom and the background. Let's see if we can drop our gradient down a bit. Maybe even more. We don't want to kind of look like too sharp a transition between the background and the mushroom. We want it to look natural. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good there. Uh, so we'll just call this BG Dark, just so we know what we're looking at. Okay, so I think we're nearly done. I think we'll sharpen it up. So we'll use Diffuse and Sharpen as usual. We we'll use the No AA Filter preset, and that's pretty good. We've already taken pains to accentuate the mushroom throughout the process, so we may as well do it with sharpening as well. We don't need to sharpen all this kind of blurry background, especially as we have a bit of noise we'll just be sharpening noise so uh, let's use let's use a drawn mask and in fact we can use the same drawn mask as the vignette so if we go down here we've clicked drawn mask here we've got draw mask no mask use if i click this down you can see that we can use the same shapes as exposure one which is our uh, vignette exposure module so if i click that just zoom out you can see it's applied that shape you remember that we inverted our uh, mask for the vignette, but the same shape tool there kind of doesn't carry that over. So it's already just selected just that oval. And um, we can probably tighten that up and roll that in a little bit. There we go. So now we're just sharpening our mushroom, not sharpening anything outside. We'll duplicate this again. We'll go for uh, Lens D Blur Soft. And we'll do exactly the same thing again. We'll use the same mask as this time diffuse or sharpen because we adjusted it slightly. There we go. And let's have a look at local contrast as well. So we'll duplicate yet again. Local contrast fast. Now, do we want this on the whole image or do we just want it on the mushroom? I think we'll leave it on the whole image, but maybe just tone it down. We'll use a uniform mask. And then we'll just go to like 70%, I think. Yeah, that 
that's giving it just a bit of a bit of punch. And usually I kind of skip straight to doing the before and after, but I think someone did ask recently how I actually do that, how you, how you can do a before and after in Darktable. So I'll show you the process. Again, you click out the left-hand panel here, which is your history stack, which lets you go back through what you've done. And if you go to the top, you can see there's a snapshot section. So I'm on my last step, which is our last diffusion sharpen, I'll click take snapshot. And then I'll go back down my history stack to the beginning of the processing. And what I'll do is uh, I'll just go to lens correction so that we're not getting any kind of weird distortion change when we go through our before and after. So I've gone back all the way down in my history stack to right the beginning of the process. Now I'm going to go back up to my snapshot and select that. You can see as soon as I select that, we get a dividing line in our image. So I'm going to close this down again. And we can grab this little flag with the S on. And it can sometimes be a little bit slow until it catches up with what you're doing, certainly on my system. And you can just drag it back and forth. So you can see that we've cropped it down, dramatically darkened the background. We've desaturated the background, made it more blurry. And we've used a lot of mask in this one, which I don't do a lot of with my uh, my bigger landscapes mainly because um, often they don't need it. But for this one, you're kind of really accentuating a particular subject. They really do come in handy. So that's how you do before and after as well. And that's the before and after for this image. OK, so there's our final image. I hope you like this one. Uh, a bit different from our usual big landscape fair, as I said at the beginning, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching as ever. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, uh, you can leave a super thanks if you so wish, but it's by no means an obligation. So uh, thanks for watching again, and I will catch you on the next one.